What is going on guys and welcome back to another video here. I have not done a video like this in quite some time so I'm going to take some time just to make something and uh, this is just kind of a personal preference type of thing. This is my opinion type of thing but I'm going to be going over why I believe the 5.9 third gen Cummins trucks are one of the best if not the best generation of Dodge Cummins pickup to own and buy in the market today and I'll kind of explain that and I'll give you my reasons why I'm saying that. So there's a lot of different reasons and a lot of different things to consider when it comes to why I would say this would be the best truck to buy right now. You can also enter to win this one right now, lpgear.com, by simply ordering anything on the website or our app and getting entered to win this thing if you want this exact truck and taking a chance at winning that thing. Launch week, 30 times bonus entries do end on Sunday. So hit the link in the description and get on over there and enter if you want to do that. If not, Enjoy the video. So guys, this here is a 2004 59 Cummins double cab or crew cab, whatever you call it in these years. And it's actually got a fourth gen leather interior swap on it. So this did not come like this. You could get leather in these trucks, very similar quality and feel, but just different styling of the seat, of course, for the original sets that you could get in these. But I'm gonna go over why I think this is the best generation of Dodge truck that you can buy for the money right now with the current market and the way that things are with what's out there. And keep in mind, I am saying this only in the aspect of a daily driving vehicle. If you're wanting comfort, you're wanting pre-emissions, you're wanting you know, decent styling and features for the money and still being pre-emissions, but not being, you know, like a first gen, which is a totally different type of super cool for the money. But but that's just totally different. So I could go and say my favorite generation of Dodge is a second gen. You know, if I was gonna buy one to park or Sunday drive, my favorite generation would be a first gen. I could say for technology and having every bell and whistle, obviously my favorite generation would be the fifth gen. But if I had to pick a happy medium for the money, comfort, reliability, pre-emissions, durable. Which truck would I say, which generation of Dodge would be the best for the money? And I would have to say this one. Now I'm gonna go over the reasons why I think this truck is the best generation of Dodge for the money right now. And when I say that, I'm talking about for the diesel specifically. So, you know, if you like the third gen gassers, that's totally cool. I've never owned one, so I'm not gonna speak on those. But these trucks for the money seem like some of the best to buy right now i bought a lot of first gens second gens i bought a handful of these third gens and i'll tell you something that i've noticed with the trend recently with the current market conditions you don't really see a huge change in pricing on these trucks until you get to like the newer years of fourth gens like the later model of fourth gens um, when I say that I'm talking like 2014 is a newer, it doesn't really seem like you see a huge price jump in the prices of these trucks when it comes to configuration and mileage. It seems like they're very relatively similar all the way through first, second, and even third gens and the early fourth gens, like the 2009 to, you know, 13s, 12s, I guess 12s, um, before they did like a suspension change up in the front end. There's not a huge price gap between these when it comes to finding a truck with similar mileage in the similar condition. And I'll give you a little bit of insight on what I'm talking about for at least my area and where I look for these trucks, this third gen with 160,000 miles on it. If I were to find a second gen with the same mileage, you know, automatic, you know, same same mileage, same configuration, let's say the, the better of the configurations you could get for the year, let's say it was an extended cab, you know, short or long bed, you know, it's an auto and this is a you know a double cab or whatever they call it you know it's the, the four door but it's not the mega cab but it's a four door short bed five nine automatic you know no rust on it let's say you're looking at a second gen same condition 160,000 miles you know it's an extended cab short bed automatic no rust on it or you look at a first gen and it's the whatever they call it the the extended cab version of a first gen with you know you can only get a long bed unless you had specific custom stuff done, but it was long bed, automatic, 160,000 miles, no rust on it. You're gonna pay about the same amount of money, maybe even more, for a first or second gen in the same condition as you would for one of these trucks. And again, I said the same or more, in some cases less depending, but I'm saying if it's in the same condition, rust-free, clean, same configuration in terms of 
you know, a little bit bigger cab for what you could get for the year, which in this truck, in this year, you know, this cab configuration is the closest to an extended cab. It's not a full four door mega cab truck with a bigger back seat. It's a little bit tight. You know, it is a back seat, but it's a little bit tight. If you compare that and you're looking at, you know, a $20,000 budget, give or take 20, 25, 30, depending on where you are in the country, literally second gens close to this are going for about 30 grand, depending on where you're where you're buying them, who's listing them. You guys have all seen the posts and there's guys that will say, oh, those trucks are never selling for that much. No, I I will assure you they are selling for that much. Um, you might not be the type of buyer they're looking for. Maybe it's some guy that's going to buy it, stick it in a barn that's got heated and cooled you know, climate control and he might not ever drive it. He might just take it out on two or three drives a year and change the fluids and never use it. But I assure you, they are getting that kind of money for these trucks. Same with first gens. I mean, first gens are bringing unbelievable amounts of money, anywhere from twenty to forty thousand, depending if it's like you know two hundred thousand mile truck or a twenty thousand mile truck. Um, and yes, guys are paying it. When I say guys are paying it, I'm talking. It might not be you, might not be guys like me, but it, there's guys out there that are paying that kind of money for those trucks. You know, they're not using them as work trucks. More than likely, they're probably using it to pull a camper a couple of times a year, only in the sunny days. Um, you know, they might be parking them in a barn with, again, heat and AZ, and it's not really getting used as a truck, but somebody's buying. That being said, relatively speaking, though, first, second, and third gens, and even some of the early fourth gens, again, those 09 and a halves or whatever, they started making the fourth gen body style to like 2012s. I just saw a 2000, I think it was a 2011 or 12. So it was an earlier model of the fourth gen before they updated the suspension and the interior and stuff. And I couldn't believe you know, I was looking at this third gen and I was looking at this fourth gen. The fourth gen had 108,000 miles on it, full four door lift on it, good Nitto tires. Uh, you know, and, you know, it was a tradesman, so it didn't have the leather, but it had just a little tiny rip in the seat. Otherwise, great maintained, well maintained truck. And the guy wanted like 26 or 28,000 for it. I'm like, it makes it so hard to buy, you know, a second gen or a third gen when you look at the price of a, an early model fourth gen and they're going for about the same money. You're like, Oh my goodness, you know, it's like, I like those trucks in terms of having the bigger roomier cab and, you know, a little more technology, still not the greatest, but there's a little more there. Some of the more nice creature comfort stuff, but it just makes it hard to decide on what model you're to buy because you're like, when the prices are almost the same, no matter what generation you go to between first to the early fourth gens, it's really just preference on like, what truck do you like more when it comes to styling and stuff like that? What's your intention with it? Are you gonna park it? You know, do you just really want a first gen because you want to sit in the barn? You just really want a second gen because, you know, it's sentimental to you. But if you had to put all that stuff aside and you were just looking at, I want to buy the most comfortable, most reliable, um, most practical, newest truck that I could get for the money, still be pre-emissions. It's not going to give me a bunch of headache. My debate is that the 5.9 third gen Cummins trucks, manual if you can find one, they're very hard to find. Autos are fine if they were well-maintained trucks probably would be my number one pick if i had to pick a truck that would be the most comfortable to daily drive and use and work but still be pre-emissions 15 to twenty-five thousand dollar budget for a clean first gen or second gen or third gen it's going to be about the same um i'd probably i'd probably go with the third gen now i'm partial to second gens for their styling i love the second gen styling i think it's just iconic and since the second gens were the first one to have that shape of front end, I just feel like it's it's hard for me to get away from those trucks because I just love them, especially the manuals, the five speeds. Every time I daily drive a third gen, every single time I get one and I start daily driving it for a couple weeks, I'm like, I'm not going to lie. Um, I really like second gens, but I really like daily driving a third gen if I had to choose between the two. The, the, ca the cab sound dampening and stuff is just a little bit better, it seems like. Um, the heating and the AC and stuff just works better. It seems like, I mean, stuff like that. I mean, it, they just seem like you get more creature comforts and you get more truck for the money when it comes to a daily driver truck, more comfort, you know, you still get reliability, you get a little bit more room, you know, some of that stuff. But anyways, that's just my, that's just my personal preference. So let me show you a little inside of this truck. Of course, you got the steering wheel, you got your controls on the wheel, which is nice. Excel, D cell. This one's actually got a Pioneer head unit with Apple CarPlay, heat and AC, all the selectable functions. And when it comes to styling of these trucks, they are really good looking trucks. And now I can show you the rest of my little 
collection I got hiding in the barn here. Um, this is one of our current giveaway trucks that just ended and is going to be going off to one of you guys that entered to win that thing soon. But my wife's got a second gen 24 valve. My personal truck, which is my late grandfather's Ram 1500 that I got him back in early 2018 or late 2017. Um, nice truck, you know, for the year. And I got a lot of stuff redone on it. And in it, and there's nothing wrong with these trucks, obviously. If you prefer second gens, I love second gens. So don't take me the wrong way when I say this. I just don't think they're the best truck for the money in the current market. They might have been the best truck for the money 10 years ago. You know what I mean? Uh, but now it seems like the pricing is just far too close between a, a clean, again, if you're comparing apples to apples, like a clean first gen, a clean second gen, or a clean third gen with the same or similar miles, the pricing is just way too similar to pass up the creature comfort and the options and the things that you get with a third gen in terms of, again, just being comfortable and a little more room and stuff like that. Like, it's just hard to beat that offering in one of those trucks when it's going to cost you about the same as buying one of these trucks right now. You know, so that's that's literally how it is. Like, this truck here has a little more miles than the third gen. It's not a, it's not a four-door. It's not a whole lot less room than that third gen because the third gen back doors, unless you get a mega cab, the back doors are kind of small anyways. So it's the closest comparison as you can get to this truck right here, which is a... 2001 extended cab, five speed, um, five, nine, 24 valve. This truck cost me just about exactly the same as that third gen. That's your comparison. That's what I'm telling you. So and let me show you inside that truck, by the way, too. And I, and I'm literally telling you this because I'm just saying for the money, you know, again, there's nothing wrong with these trucks. I love second gens, but you know, the vents, seems like the the motor in the back that controls the vents it seems like they're very finicky if it's too cold they don't want to adjust properly or if it's too hot some of your some of your electronics don't want to work like the radio stuff like that um i mean it's got most of the same features i guess for selectability but it just it definitely doesn't come through the vents the same on that kind of that kind of stuff um the steering wheel controls on this one work but on a lot of second gens they don't because they just seem to go bad pretty easily the interior build quality is not exceptionally amazing on second gens or third gens but i would argue that the third gens are probably built a little bit better um in my honest opinion but um but again it just depends on what you like but for me personally, looking at this truck and all the options you get for the money, if I were going to go buy one and I wanted to have a diesel and I had an option between, let's be real, a second gen or a third gen, first gens are almost impossible to find in really good shape. But if I had to choose between a second gen or a third gen that's in almost the same condition and bring in about the same price or very close to it, I'd probably go with the third gen for the money. Now, when it comes to styling preferences, again, I'm in love with these trucks. It's hard to get me away from a second gen. That's why I buy so many of them. Um, even when I look at the prices of these, I'm just always suckered into buying a second gen just because I like them so much. And I'm sure a lot of you guys can agree. Uh, I mean, there's, there you go. Like I said, a guy that has three second gens sitting in the barn, two of which are our trucks, our personal vehicles. Um, styling, it's hard to beat the iconic styling of a second gen. When it comes to the amount of comfort features and truck for the money, it's really hard to beat it. Really hard to beat a third gen. My little debate there on why I think third gens are the best diesel that you can get. The pre emissions 5.9 third gens are the best generation of Dodge you can get for the money in the current market if you're wanting a comfortable, daily drivable, you know, truck for the money, but you don't want to go new. You don't want to deal with all the emissions crap. You want pre emissions but you want the most comfortable for the money. I just really think these are the truck. I just think they are. Um, again, I'm, I'm a sucker for second gens, and this is not me saying I don't like second gens because I freaking love them. I'm saying for the money, if you're wanting the most comfortable and reliable combination with pre-emissions for the money, it's just really hard to beat these. Guys, let me know down in the comments, what are you guys thinking? What's your debate on that? What's your perspective on it? it also, again, it depends what you're using the truck for. You're gonna park it, you're gonna drive it, you're gonna beat the snot out of it. Maybe you don't want a third gen. Maybe you want to buy a, you know, uh, a second gen that's a little 
beat to crap and you just want to keep on beating the crap out of it and working the mess out of it maybe that is your option you know because you can find a really cheap second gen if they're beat up that's for sure uh, but in really good condition apples to apples same miles it's rust free it's really hard to find a much different in price it seems like almost anywhere you look so anyways guys thanks so much drop those comments and i'll catch you in the next video Peace.